Uh, the reason we're here doing this today is because we have, this is an old house, so actually this is not against code the way this is terminated for the year that it was built. Um, but current codes would dictate some different procedures um, and installation practices. So what we have coming in here, these are feeder conductors. There's a main circuit breaker on the outside of the house. So our service entrance conductors end at the outside of the house where that main disconnect is, these are feeders. Now since they're feeders, there should be an insulated neutral conductor um, included with these conductors coming in. But as we can see, we have a line one, line two conductor, and then we have the neutral and equipment grounding conductor sharing this one braided um, type SE cable. So we're gonna have to get that replaced. We have to replace this cable up here, and then we're gonna have to install a ground bar down here at the, um, somewhere in this panel and get all these neutrals and grounds separated. Yeah, I don't know if the homeowner forgets what's going on. He comes around, he turns the breaker on, or somebody else, you know, maybe, maybe there's somebody sleeping in the back bedroom, I don't know, and they're like, hey, power's off, and they don't know what's going on. They come around, turn the power on, and next thing you know, I'm in trouble. Um, so, turn power off, so that's easy. And then we'll put our lock and our tag on it. The tag has some required information that you put in. You put in your name, the department, you know, in this case, electrical, expected completion date. And then if you have any special remarks, you put that on the back. But so, this guy, put my lock in. Tag, lock. Right, and then this is the only key for this lock. So since this is the only key, the only way somebody's gonna to get to this to turn this back on is with this key or if they decide to cut that on me, which is still possible. But now you can see that can't be turned on. And so we're safe to proceed inside. Also, we have a problem in here. There is a spider. Where is it? There's a spider. And I dealt with the spider. Are we good to go? Yes, we're great. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and get that ground bar mounted in the pan. There we go. Let's talk about why we're here doing this in the first place. Uh, so when, as electricians, our job is to install circuits in a way that we are controlling the path of current flow. You know, we want electrons to move through our circuit conductors. We don't want them moving through the building. Um, we want to limit the amount of current flow uh, through the use of the proper overcurrent protection and all that. Um, and so, you know, the, the reason that we're here doing this job is um, in order to provide that, in order to provide that controlled current flow, which uh, with the way it's currently set up is not being provided. So here's a normal circuit. We have a utility transformer. You now you recognize this as being either, either a pole mounted transformer or a pad mounted transformer, but it could be any source. It could be an on-site generator, you know, any, anything providing that power supply. Um, so current will flow from that source through your line conductors, line one and line two. It will go through the circuit conductors as, as shown here. makes its way to the panel. So what we have, what's happened up to this point is from the utility transformer, current has flowed through, through our main circuit breaker. This is also known as our service disconnect. So through that main circuit breaker, through our circuit conductors, up to the main lugs of this main lug only style panel. Now from this point, we have all these branch circuit conductors and these are sized for the, the circuit conductors that are that are run from this point and for the loads being served. So these are sized appropriately for those. So current will continue to flow through those conductors, through the load, and then back. And in, the, in this circuit, this is a two pole circuit. So we have a water heater or some, something like that. So from here, it will flow back and then it will return on line two. Now, what about 120 volt circuits? So if we follow the circuit for that, you can see that current is going to flow from the circuit breaker through the load and then back on the neutral. Current flows on the neutral. And so we have current now flowing through the neutral 
and then back uh, and then it will travel back through this neutral conductor that runs with our service conductors and it will it will make its way back to this point in our service disconnect where we have our neutral terminated and then from there it will continue and go back to the source so electrons are always trying to get back to the source they're not trying to get to ground they're not trying to get anywhere else they're they will only flow in a complete circuit and the complete circuit here as you can follow it runs from through your line conductors through your neutral conductor and back or in the case of circuits that don't use a neutral it will travel between these two phase conductors okay so that's a normal circuit um, and this is what we want we want to control the path of current flow now in the instance of this installation that we are doing here what we have is something that looks more like this now this conductor here when we got here this conductor this green conductor that did not exist so what we did what we didn't have was a it was another conductor coming back to the service disconnect this is some this is what we added in order to to fix this uh, installation um, but essentially circuit wise this is the same thing here's what I've drawn is from our neutral to our ground bar there's a connection all these neutrals and grounds were connected okay so what's the problem with that um, whereas in this illustration we can see you know, if we follow these arrows we're controlling the path of, of current flow through our circuit conductors back to the source. Now, if we have all of our neutrals and grounds connecting at this ground bar and also connected here in our service disconnect, then what we have created are parallel paths for current to flow. So current will flow then if there was an equipment grounding conductor as in this installation, as in this illustration, then you would have current flowing back on your neutral conductor and you would also have current flowing on your ground on your grounding conductor so now you have a parallel current path there you're not controlling the current flow through the normal operation of the circuit only to the neutral we have two so at least two paths back and that would be the case in in this installation um, before we fixed it now what if we had a metal building you know all this steel we have metal water pipes, copper water pipes, all these metallic systems that are all bonded together. And, you know, we're mounting our panels to, to the structure. We're mounting our panels to metal framing. We're installing an equipment grounding conductor that's terminating at all these points along the system, um, which is necessary to facilitate the operation of overcurrent devices. Um, but if we then also bond our system in more than one place, what we've created is multiple parallel paths for current flow. So if we can picture that this um, black outline here is a metal structure and we have a metal um, panel can here that is bonded with neutral and the ground conductors are bonded here, then current will be introduced into the metal parts of the building and follow a path through the building as well back to the source because current will take all paths not just one path not just the path of least resistance as if that were just one thing the path of least resistance is is the sum of all available paths if you learn that you know when when we, when we learn about parallel circ um, resistors attached in parallel if you have one 100 ohm resistor and then you install another 100 ohm resistor in parallel with that now what you have is 50 ohms of resistance and then the more that the more paths for current flow the lower that resistance becomes and then the higher the current can flow the higher amount of current that will flow with the lower circuit resistance so obviously there's a lot of reasons why we don't want this to happen um, one if we're not controlling current flow and we're allowing it to flow through the building um, these connections you know steel to steel parts you know they're not necessarily reliable and so you could have a connection that's you know making some contact but it's it's going to be a source of heat you know high resistance creates heat and you could have arcing there and those of course will cause fires um, some other uh, problems that could be introduced is if you have you know current trying to flow through here and you have a, a, a person comes in contact with that and then also comes in contact in two points on their body then current will flow start flowing through their body back to the source they'll become part of that circuit 
you know, and that introduces an electrical an electrocution hazard to them. Um, and then another thing that's not good uh, when we're when we're doing stuff like this is um, we have current flowing back on the grounds, equipment grounding conductor, which that's what we want. But uh, since we're bonded, we also have, and I'm talking about a fault current situation. So under a fault current situation, um, it would happen in any current flow. So even under normal current flow, you have some current. So if there was 10 ohm, excuse me, if there was 10 amps of current flowing on your neutral under a normal condition, in this example, we would also, and not, we wouldn't only have five amps flowing on the neutral, you would have maybe two and a half amps flowing on the neutral, you know, a couple amps flowing on the ground and some, some current flowing through the building, right? Because of math, <laughs> but your current is going be depending on the resistance of each of these paths, you know, current is going to be divided among those, those, uh, pathways. Um, so that's not good under normal conditions. Um, but then the current's fairly low. So while that's bad, it's not as bad as when we start talking about fault current. So what happens when we have fault current? Well, under a fault current condition, you could have many thousands of amps of current flow. And so, whereas under a normal condition, you might have only a couple amps of uh, current flowing across all of these parallel paths. Under a fault condition, if you have 5,000 amps divided among three, you know, these three paths for current flow back to the source, well, that's a lot of current. The higher the current flow, the, the larger the electromagnetic field that's created. And you can imagine what could happen under that under those scenarios is now you're going to start inducing uh, currents, you know, even more currents onto other um, uh, me metal parts of the building. You're going to have fault current running through your neutral conductor. And that that large amount of fault current is going to damage electronics um, and things of that nature. Um, just a lot of bad things can happen. Damage to people, you know, injury to people, damage to property, all, all sorts of these things are introduced when you bond at both at the service and anywhere else in the system. So bottom line is when we are bonding electrical systems, um, and this would be any, any transformer um, would be an electrical system. And then if you have multiple transformers in a building, you you have multiple systems. We call those separately derived systems. It's just a fancy word, but it just, you know, anytime you, you're creating a new power source, that's an, that's a system. And at those systems, that is where we are bonding our neutral and ground um, connections. If you do it anywhere else, that you're introducing all these parallel paths for current to flow. You're not controlling that, that current flow. Uh, you're introducing electrocution hazards. You're introducing arcing potential throughout the building, which would create fires. Um, just a lot of negative impacts to, to multiple to bonding in multiple places so so we don't want to do that and that's all i have to say about that